Are you new to 4K physical media and wondering what some of the best titles out there are to pick up? Well, today I'm going to go over 10 of my personal favorite 4K releases to date that I think really take full advantage of everything the format has to offer. So let's rock this. Hi everyone, how you doing? Welcome back, I'm Fuzz. Uh, so one of the most common questions I see asked out there uh, among new 4K collectors is, what are some of the best 4K discs out there on the market? If I'm just getting into 4K for the first time, I, I certainly want to know where should I start, right? Uh, there are so many titles out there and it can indeed be a little overwhelming when you're, when you're first entering the, uh, the collecting scene because you certainly don't want to invest your hard-earned money in any duds, right? So today I want to talk about reference quality 4K discs. Now, when I say that term reference, what do I mean by that? Uh, for those, you know, not familiar with the terminology, uh, when I say reference, what I mean is something that is demo worthy, demonstration quality, right? Meaning 4K titles that really show off everything the format is capable of or otherwise serve as some of the best examples as to why someone might want to upgrade to 4K. These are the kind of titles you can show off to your friends and family who might be uh, on the fence with 4K, maybe considering taking the plunge, but they just are not sure if they want to go all in yet. These are the kind of titles that you want to show them. Now, keep in mind, we're talking about restoration and transfer quality with these titles that I'm going to be discussing, right? I'm not going to be talking about the merits of the films themselves. Uh, this is purely focused on the visual quality, uh, how the films look uh, on 4K. Now, granted, the term reference is probably a little too overused at this point, uh, but I think we still need to have a common language that we can use, that we all agree on, uh, to describe the 4K releases out there that absolutely blow us away, right? Uh, so I use the term reference or near reference. And I do believe that all of the titles I'm going to be discussing here today are reference titles or damn near reference titles. And of course, some of that is subjective in terms of choosing one over another, right? But I think you'll see there are some common threads here. A lot of collectors uh, do agree on a number of these titles that I'm going to be citing. Um, you know, I asked the same question when I first got into collecting 4K. I asked other collectors out there, hey, where should I start, right? And uh, some of these titles that I'm going to be talking about are the very suggestions that I was given when I first started. Uh, and... Uh, They've held up to me. I, I, I totally agree. They are absolutely uh, stunning discs. Now, I personally think there are a lot of good 4K titles out there. So this list really is just my own personal preference. Uh, it's a list of some of the 4K titles that have really stood out for me as some of the most incredible releases on the format. But keep in mind, I'm only talking about horror, sci-fi, and action film genres on this channel, right? So... Uh, this list is not intended to be a definitive or, or comprehensive list of all the best 4K discs out there. Uh, I'm sure there are some great 4K discs in other genres that other people would consider equally as good as the ones I'm going to mention here, right? Uh, so this is just, you know, it's my opinion. Uh, keep that in mind. Um, but I do think you'll find there's a lot of agreement uh, among collectors on at least some of these titles that I'm about to mention. So just think of this as more of a list of suggestions and recommendations uh, for those who might be fairly new to 4K and are looking for some great ideas. Uh, also keep in mind, I've decided not to rank this list today. Uh, I am listing 10 titles that I think are among the best on the 4K format, uh, but I'm not going to put them in any kind of order, mainly because most of these titles are actually on fairly equal footing uh, in my book. Uh, and it would be like splitting hairs trying to pick one over the other, right? They're all excellent. So you just, you really can't go wrong with any of these that I'm about to get into here. Also, uh, even though I'm not ranking my top 10, uh, I will still have some honorable mentions at the end of this list that I think are arguably just as good uh, and absolutely worth taking a look at on 4K. So without any further ado, let's get into this list. Okay, so starting off, we have a film by the great Dario Argento, and that would be Suspiria. Uh, this was released by Synapse Films a few years ago, and it is absolutely incredible. Uh, I believe this is probably the best 4K uh, disc, 4K transfer out there of Dario Argento's films. Uh, Phenomena is pretty close, and Synapse also put out uh, a release of that as well. But this one, for my money, this is the best 4K I've seen of any Dario Argento film. 
Um, I believe now, keep in mind the guys at Synapse, it's only a couple guys working over there. And I believe they spent like two years working on this, uh, getting the restoration done right and whatnot. Um, and this film just lends itself so well, uh, to the 4k format. It's got this hyper stylized kind of avant-garde look. Uh, Argento uses a lot of heavily saturated primary colors. It really is just an amazing film to look at, and it's, it's truly a work of art. Um, this is one of those titles that I think is an absolute must-own for any Argento fan uh, or any horror fan in general. If you're looking to get into 4K and you're a big horror fan, uh, this is definitely where I would start. Uh, continuing the horror thing, Stanley Kubrick's The Shining is another one that is just really stunning on 4K. Um, and, and you would expect that, right? I mean, it's Stanley Kubrick. <laughs> of course it's going to look amazing. So, And one of the common themes I think you'll notice with many of these uh, recommendations is that the source material that they had to work with was very good, right? Uh, some films just lend themselves very well to the 4K format. Some films were made for 4K, it almost seems like, right? Uh, so this is one of those. Um, I've mentioned this before on this channel. Uh, I won't get into this too much other than if you're a fan of the film, you absolutely have got to get this on 4K. Uh, it's an incredible transfer. The detail is just amazing. Um, yeah, it's, it's awesome. So definitely pick up The Shining if you can uh, at some point. Next up, we have the Studio Canal release of the Fifth Element, and I apologize for the reflection or glare there. I try to hold it so that you don't get too much of that. But uh, now with this title, this one's kind of unique uh, because there have been two different 4K releases for this. There is this Studio Canal version, which was put out in the UK, and then there is the US version, the Sony, uh, the Sony release that 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 uh, is not the one you want. Right. I mean, the Sony release looks OK, but really this was significantly better. So you want the cover that has this artwork. And I will actually put a link to this uh, in the description down below um, so that you'll know which one to go for, because there is a really big difference uh, between the US Sony release and this UK studio uh, canal release. The Sony release, I think the grain management is a little bit better with this. and. I don't know what it is that they did uh, differently with this one, but the difference between the two releases is huge. This looks much, much better than what we got here in the U.S. So um, definitely pick up The Fifth Element, a great sci-fi film from the 90s, of course. One thing that kind of surprised me about this film when I was watching it uh, recently was just how many practical set pieces, how many practical sets were actually used in this film. Um, yes, there's CGI in the film, but not as much as you might think. They did a lot of set design uh, with this film, and it just looks amazing uh, when you get it on 4K. Um, I would even say this is one that I double dipped for. Like I was happy to buy this again, even on the same format, just to get the better quality from the Studio Canal release. Um, and I'm not a big fan of double dipping on the same format very often, but this one, it was absolutely worth it. Um, and you can even get it from Amazon US. It just takes a little bit longer to get to you because it's coming, I think it goes through like Amazon Global or something. But yeah, this Studio Canal release is, is the way to go for, for this film. So absolutely check it out. Moving on to another Stanley Kubrick film. Uh, as you might expect, 2001 is a masterpiece. Um, and this one, uh, you'll hear a lot of collectors uh, mention this one when they cite their best 4K discs. Uh, this is easily uh, one of the best 4K discs that have ever been released. Um, and again, the source material really helps. I believe it was shot on, what, 70 millimeter? Uh, so, yeah, it you could almost make the case that this film looks like it was shot within the last, you know, 10 or 15 years or something. It looks that good. Um, so... Yeah, definitely pick up 2001 A Space Odyssey on 4K if you haven't uh, if you haven't checked it out yet. Okay, and next up we have a Christopher Nolan film. This is one I always mention. It's usually one of the first titles to come out of my mouth when I'm recommending uh, 4K titles to people, and that is Interstellar. This is awesome on 4K. Um, 
One thing that makes this film so cool, and Christopher Nolan does this a lot, and he does this with other films as well, uh, uh, this has shifting aspect ratios, right? They use multiple aspect ratios. So they have the scope aspect ratio during certain scenes where you have the black bars on the top and the bottom, right? But then for another scene, it'll go to uh, like an IMAX aspect ratio and open up your whole screen to where your whole screen is filled with image. Um, and it goes back and forth between those two aspect ratios seamlessly. Um, that's This isn't the first title on this list that for that for which that's a, a factor but yeah the shipping aspect ratios are really cool and uh just incredible amount of detail on this just a, a stunning film all the way around so um you'll hear a lot of 4k collectors mention this one uh it's a very common it's a common favorite among uh, 4k collectors so definitely check it out on 4k if you haven't yet and next up is one i've talked about a ton so i'll try to keep it brief the thing uh, this is another one you will hear a lot of collectors frequently mention or cite as, as one of the best 4Ks out there. Uh, this doesn't even have Dolby Vision, uh, and it still looks fantastic. Uh, again, you know, it's another uh, case where you had amazing source material to work with. It's John Carpenter. It's Rob Bottin's, uh practical effects. And I would argue that Rob Bottin's effects uh, on this film uh, have really stood the test of time. Uh, when you pop this bad boy in, you see all the uh, glorpy, gooey, uh, glistening goodness that is Rob Bottin's work, right? And uh, it, it's pretty mind-blowing how good this stuff actually looks on here. Uh, outside of Rob Bottin's effects, you've got colors popping all over the place on this. Uh, the couple colors are really vibrant and striking, which you might not necessarily expect considering the setting for this film, but everything just pops like you wouldn't believe in this. So um, if you don't have the thing yet on 4K, it's a must-own for any sci-fi horror fan. And another must-own for any sci-fi horror fan would be Alien, another one I've discussed a ton on this channel. It's one of my top five favorite movies of all time. Uh, absolutely a reference quality release. Um, and what makes this one so good on 4K is uh, it's a really dark film, right? So the HDR pass uh, and the wider color gamut, I mean, you put the HDR in there and you can see a lot more detail in those darker scenes uh, than you were able to ever see before. Uh, and that's because of the HDR. Um, so yeah, the detail is, the fine detail is fantastic on this. Um, the dynamic range on this is really a game changer for this film. So uh, definitely pick up Alien on 4K if you haven't uh, and you're interested in, well, this kind of film, right? Again, another Nolan films coming up here. Well, now, I, I'm kind of cheating here a little bit. <laughs> I am including a whole trilogy as a single entry here as one of my 10, and that is the Dark Knight trilogy. Uh, Christopher Nolan, again, we get these shifting aspect ratios in uh, the second and third film, I believe it is. Uh, and these just look amazing. If you're a fan of the Dark Knight franchise, you absolutely must own this on 4K. It's it's incredible. Um, now, now, even Batman Begins, the first one, which a lot of people didn't think looked very good before uh, on Blu-ray, including myself. I thought the old 2006 Blu-ray of Batman Begins looked like crap, really. But even Batman Begins is greatly improved uh, by the work done on this 4K. So all three films are great in 4K. Uh, my favorite is The Dark Knight uh, with Heath, right? I mean, isn't that everyone's favorite? <laughs> and like I said, you get shifting aspect ratios, so you go back and forth between scope aspect ratio and the IMAX scenes. It's really something to see. So uh, definitely check out Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy on 4K uh, if you haven't. And sometimes if you wait, on Amazon, you can actually get this for a really reasonable price, like $25, $30. Uh, for three movies on 4K, that's a really good price. So keep an eye open uh, on Amazon and other places where they may actually have this on sale uh, quite often. So Next up, we have a film that really is different from any of the other films uh, that I'm discussing here today, and that is Ang Lee's Gemini Man. Now, this night might not be one that you would think of as like, you know, 4K reference, huh? Well, it is. It's absolutely a stunning release. And what makes this one so unique is uh, Ang Lee shot this film at 120 frames per second. 
Um, you know, usually when we're watching 4K, we're dealing with like 24 frames per second. So this was shot at a really high frame rate and it gives the film this kind of hyper surreal look that is, it's, it's hard to take your eyes off of, but at least for me, I, it's just really, really stunning. There aren't very many films that are shot in high frame rates like this. So this really is kind of a, a unique uh, deal here. And honestly, not everybody likes high frame rates. Sometimes it's too much for people. Sometimes it looks, you know, it's too jarring uh, for some people. They, they it, it makes them sick. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. That's what I've heard. Some people it makes them like kind of queasy or whatever. But I didn't have that problem at all. I was just blown away by this. But uh, so um, even though it's not the greatest film I've ever seen and the greatest story, the uh, the visuals on this are fantastic. You get into some of the action scenes and they're just jaw dropping. So. Uh, Definitely check this out when you get a chance. Um, the uh, Now, I will say the 120 frames per second, that's not what this is, okay? The, the 4K release was 60 frames per second, but even with that, the 120 frames was what, um, was what the film was shot at, and I think that's what they showed it at in the theater when it first ran in the theaters, was like 120 frames per second. The 4K is only 60 frames per second, um, but you absolutely notice the difference. Uh, pop this in and compare it to any other 4K disc uh, you have, and you will you will absolutely see what I mean. This film is a trip, so uh, definitely check it out if you get a chance. By the way, if you're enjoying the content on this channel, uh, do me a favor and please subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to hit that notification bell as well, so you can always be alerted when I'm posting cool stuff that you might dig. Uh, and also, don't forget to like the videos as well. Uh, it really helps with the channel and the channel's visibility and whatnot. So, uh, thank you so much. I really appreciate your support. Okay, and the last one, in my top ten, that is, would be the entire uh, Matrix uh, trilogy, or well, the entire Matrix, I guess it would be a quadrilogy now, wouldn't it? Um, which I have the, the trilogy here, and of course I have a, a steelbook for Matrix Resurrections. Um, so, uh, just to talk about this for a minute, there are a lot of practical sets and set pieces that really shine in 4K uh, throughout this, this whole franchise. Now, I know some people only like the first film and they didn't really get into the others. Uh, I'm a huge fan of this franchise, so I like them all, uh, including Matrix Resurrections. I thought it was a decent film. Uh, so, uh, but yeah, in 4K, um, wow. I, I would recommend all of these look good in 4K, but especially the first and the fourth film. Those two are probably the best out of the, of the whole franchise, but there's just... All four of these films are really good um, on this format. Uh, you get incredible uh, texture depth and detail in the cyberpunk set designs. Uh, you notice uh, all kinds of stuff in the furniture and the technology and the clothing they're wearing. You can see so much fine detail. Uh, you can see the fine detail in their skin, the pores of their skin, facial features, hairs, things like that. Um, there's just, this thing looks ridiculously good in 4K. So uh, you definitely want to check these out. Now, um, like I said, the first film is definitely a must, but I would recommend them all. You know, I think this, this franchise has a lot of good stuff in it, personally. You know, a side detour here from the visual quality to the 4K quality. I just think there's a lot of rich subtext and social commentary uh, in this franchise, a lot, of, a lot of stuff about the human condition and whatnot. So I've always loved this. But the films also happen to work very well as reference quality 4K releases. And so, um, so definitely check these out. Now, I want to say something real quick about Matrix Resurrections. Um, a lot of people kind of glossed over this one or they saw it and didn't like it and then never returned to it. Uh, for one thing, this film, I think, gets much better on repeat viewings. You pick up a lot more stuff uh, on repeat viewing. So I've always loved that. But setting that aside, um, this film was actually shot, I think, using like 6K and 8K cameras, right? Uh, so this thing, the digital intermediate used to finish this film was a full native 4K digital intermediate. So this thing looks fantastic on 4K. Um, it's one of the better 4K uh, discs I've seen in terms of more recent releases in the last few years, in terms of movies that just came out in the last few years. This thing is amazing. So um, definitely give this one another look. If you maybe watched this film uh, before and didn't think you were that into it, uh, I would recommend giving it another try, especially if you're uh, thinking about 
upgrading these to uh, 4K. Uh, fantastic stuff. Uh, these are must-own titles in 4K for me. So that's my top 10, but let me get on to a few honorable mentions real quick here. I'm not going to go too much longer here because this is kind of, I'm starting to ramble. <laughs> so um, you've probably heard this a lot before. Jaws is a must-own 4K. Uh, if you really want to see a, you know, a, a early mid seventies film done right in terms of the 4K restoration, this is incredible. And uh, you know, you just can't go wrong with this on 4K. So definitely pick this one up if you're uh, if you're a fan of, uh, of of the movie, of course. Uh, but are you looking for a good 4K? Um, I've talked about Amityville Horror before. I'm not going to get into this too much because I've said a lot about this, but this one really surprised me, and I do consider it a reference quality uh, 4K disc. Uh, the detail and colors and the level of depth here, Vinegar Syndrome just blew my mind with this release. So um, if you still haven't checked it out yet, uh, absolutely uh, pick it up at some point. Um, Back to the Future, right? Back to the Future, we got to... Got to mention Back to the Future, another, you know, incredible looking set. Um, all, all three of the films look really good. Um, so, yeah, I'm not going to say too much about this. You guys, you guys know what these movies are. So, but uh, if you haven't picked them up on 4K yet, you are definitely missing out. Um, from Second Sight over in the UK, I picked up this Dawn of the Dead uh, box set a couple years ago. And yeah, this counts as well absolutely demo worthy uh, reference quality disc uh, and if you're a fan of the film you really can't go wrong with this there's like three different cuts of the film on here plus you get a bonus disc uh, of with some great special features so but that aside uh, the transfer looks stunning on this uh, and another must own if you're a horror fan uh, that's getting into 4k so um okay and just a few more uh Titles here, these are more recent titles. Uh, and when I say more recent, I say within like the last, I don't know, 10, 15 years or so. If you're looking for something a little bit more digital, <laughs> uh, but still awesome, uh, Alita Battle Angel, really good 4K uh, disc. Now this is a bit of an upscale, if I remember correctly. I think this is an upscale, but you would be surprised at how damn good this looks. I would put this in the probably near reference uh, near reference quality uh, category. So, but um, Robert Rodriguez and James Cameron, uh, underrated film that I think was under the radar for a lot of people. But if you've never seen this, you definitely want to check it out. Um, this one's usually pretty affordable too. Uh, I think you can usually get it for like ten or fifteen dollars uh, on Amazon. So, Alita Battle Angel. If you haven't checked it out, um, another one that's actually a four K upscale or a two K upscale. But I think they used like four or six K digital cameras to film the source material, and that is Pacific Rim. This is another one of those ones that is commonly mentioned among collectors, four uh, K collectors, as a, a fantastic transfer. Um, I was amazed at how much detail and uh, depth this image had. Uh, but you know, it's Guillermo del Toro. Um, I'm only maybe lukewarm on the film. I mean, it's a decent film. But I really bought it because of the 4K. I, I had heard the 4K looked amazing, and uh, it did not disappoint. So, uh, yeah, Pacific Rim's another good one. Okay, and then the two big ones here. Uh, we can't talk about reference quality 4K transfers without talking about Top Gun Maverick, right? Um, so, I'm not even going to say that much about this. This is incredible. I think this was also shot... Uh, using like 6K cameras or something. So the resolution on this is just off the charts. And uh, this has got a huge wow factor. I mean, if you want to demo out your 4K to someone who's new to 4K and is considering taking the plunge, this might be the first title you, you pop on if you're looking for something a little newer uh, to uh, show off the system. And then the last one that I would uh, suggest is a reference quality disc. A demo-worthy disc is, of course, James Cameron's Avatar, The Way of Water. Uh, again, all shot in 4K. So, uh, you know, this is the real deal here, right? Um, an absolutely stunning film. They definitely improved upon the uh, the effects of the first film. Uh, I didn't know it could get any better than that, and he managed to pull it off. So this is, again, stunning, fantastic-looking film uh, on 4K. So uh, 
definitely pick it up if you're if you're interested in having those kind of titles in your collection. So that about wraps it up for my, my favorite uh, reference quality, demo worthy 4K discs. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts, your feedback. Uh, do you have any of these titles on 4K? And if so, do you agree with me that they're that good? Um, yeah, I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on this video. And uh, there are of course many other great 4K titles out there. And I might even do a, a second follow-up video to this at some point, uh, just, to, just to be able to cover you know, some of the other great titles that are out there that didn't quite make this list. Uh, but yeah, these should definitely get you started if you're new to collecting. Uh, also, don't forget to like the video, subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. I really appreciate your support. Uh, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you soon. <laughs>